I am never going to port City of Springs to the Switch. Developing games for the Nintendo Switch is awesome. Personally, out of all the gaming platforms, I like developing for the Switch the most. Ever since the release of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, both Sony and Microsoft have worked very hard at creating a more accessible platform. The Xbox One's core operating system is even based on Windows, running DirectX. And this resulted in that developing a game for those two platforms became basically the same as developing a game for Linux or for Mac, with the added bonus that you'd only have to target a very specific hardware requirement, as both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One hardware offered very comparable performance. The only real challenges of creating games for these platforms was their quality control and rules about naming conventions, which is all very tedious and boring work. Now the Nintendo Switch here is a totally different beastie. Behind the low spec hardware there are a lot of hidden features. The graphical capabilities change when you have it in handheld versus when you click it in its dock. The controls can detach and both the left and the right controller are also two separate controllers and have gyroscopes in them. And where the other consoles mostly try to move away from physical copies, Nintendo embraced it. Everything about the Switch shouts creativity and I love that about the Switch. The low spec hardware, it's not a limit, it's a feature. With every game I created and ported to the Switch, I had to be really extremely creative in finding ways to offer the same quality experience that my games had on much more powerful hardware, but now on such a small handheld device. Often, the creative ways of improving the Switch experience even found their way back to the other platforms, meaning that by building a game for the Switch, my game actually got better for the other platforms as well. The Switch is the only console platform left that still actually feels like you're developing for a real console, whereas developing a game for the Xbox and the PlayStation really feels like you are developing for a mid-range gaming PC with a few extra development rules. But how to actually start game development for the Nintendo Switch? Well, come on people, it's 2025 and still a lot of indie game developers are finding it difficult to get access to publishing their games on consoles. And that is crazy. No, it really is crazy because it's really easy. For many years now, it has been so easy to get access to self-publishing your games on Xbox, PlayStation, and yes, the Nintendo Switch as well. There are simply three websites you should register at, tell them what game you're planning on creating, and hit the submit button. True, when entering information on these application forms, it can be daunting and it may also look like you as a small time indie or solo game dev will never be applicable, but don't let it scare you. I've done it twice now, once for my previous company that already had a bit of a track record so it was easier, but the second time I did it as the naked dev without any track record and I didn't even have a serious plan for a game yet. And I still got in on all the three platforms forms without any issue. So I suggest that if you plan to ever want to self-publish a game for consoles, just go to these websites I linked down below and apply. I know I said the low spec hardware was a feature, but it is also partly because I really love doing game performance optimization. I love the challenge of getting rid of frame stutters, memory garbage, measuring milliseconds and going over script optimizing code without changing their functionality. Which is a massive help when creating a game for the Switch because its hardware is comparable with an iPhone 6 or a Samsung Galaxy S5 which launched in 2014, 11 years ago. Eleven years ago! But with perseverance, creativity, smart coding and a lot of knowledge on how Unity works, it is definitely possible to create beautiful games for it. In one of my previous videos I talked about all the challenges I faced in porting my open world game City of Springs to the Switch. This is how well my game City of Springs currently runs on it. Years ago, I already worked on optimizing the game for many months to get it to run stable for the Xbox and the PlayStation, and that was fine because it was never my intention to publish the game on the Switch. I'm never going to port City of Springs to the Switch. 
However, all that changed when I became the naked dev. Hi, my name is Dominic and wanted to set a real challenge for this year. There were about four major issues. The game used about three times too much memory. The game was a factor two too heavy for the CPU. Three, the game was a factor five too heavy for the GPU. And lastly, I wanted it to look the same as it does on the PC. I first had to fix the memory issue because without it, it would just crash on launch. So I painstakingly combed through every texture, model, every sound and ended up finding thousands of small ways to make the memory use it's a tiny bit smaller every time. And luckily I also found one major memory issue which had to do with custom baked meshes that were wrongly stored, taking up big amounts of memory on runtime. Or well, considered big amounts of memory in 2014. I was able to fix the memory issue in two weeks work and now I could finally launch and play the game. At 5 FPS. Needless to say, I now had to find ways to further optimize my code and dig into Unity's flaws to optimize the CPU and GPU performance, create my own curling system that would prevent Unity from doing silly stuff, remake the default post-processing effects without making them look different, but making them run more efficient, and of course bring down the draw calls, the amount of separate objects that Unity renders at the same time by at least 50%, maybe even 75. Specifically getting rid of those draw calls was a tough one. Again, I had to painstakingly comb through my whole environment and find creative ways of combining objects and make certain details only have to be rendered when close to the player without degrading the visual fidelity of the game. For the latest optimization push, we developed our new upscaler, SDSR2. All other upscalers are way too heavy to run on the Switch, but SGSR2 is specifically created for ultra performance. With a bit of help from SGSR2, I'm now able to run the game at a stable 30 FPS throughout the whole environment with the same visual quality it has on PC. Something I'm very proud of as a game developer. And it only gets better with the impending launch of the Switch 2, of course. I bet that we're all very excited to get our hands on one. At least I am. I'm going to fight like hell to also get my hands on the Switch 2 dev kit. So when I launch City of Springs for the Switch, it also has full support for the Switch 2. Are you also itching to get your hands on the Switch 2 or its dev kit like me? Did you already pre-order one or are you going to wait a bit first to wait for some proper game releases? Let me know in the comments. I really hope you liked this video once again. Please let me know by liking, disliking down below and I'll see you again next week. Thank you.